mornings with Leah Parnipa. Call 0800 844 747. Magic Talk. Good morning. We're back. It is four past ten here at Magic Talk. The number is 0800 844 747. So on... The North Shore, there is a, a road called Oniwa Road. It's a, it's a major thoroughfare for about, you know, four or five different suburbs that all use it to get down onto the bridge. So, and I live off it. I call it hell, but it's Oniwa Road. Now, every morning at the moment, it's quiet because we're in level 3.2. But normally it is, it is full by six in the morning. So they've relegated a T3 zone. And normally there is a, a man or a woman standing up and down the road with the camera to make sure that if it's just little old you in the car that you don't speed off down the T3. Uh, and now they've decided to get rid of these people who have been there for years and they're putting in 68. Well, they have put in 68 new T3 cameras. Sounds like overkill, doesn't it? There are concerns that have been raised, though, about these poles that the cameras sit on by some locals that say they block the path and that their installation has been described as incompetent. I mean, there's been photos shared online recently of one of these cameras actually sitting in the middle of a footpath that runs alongside a busy road and you've got to go around it. So what the heck is that about? And one person that might be able to talk us through it is uh, Chairman of the Company Local Board, John Gillen, and he joins us now. Good morning, John. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So, yes, for those, of course, you know, if, if it's not in their area, you know, it's not a big deal to them. But if we look around the country, more and more we are seeing these kind of cameras pop up. Uh, but they seem, let's, with Oniwa Road, it is a bit of an overkill, isn't it? And what about putting them in the middle of a footpath? Oh, it's absolutely overkill. So there are, just to clarify, there are 17 poles and each one has four cameras on. So it's a total of 68 cameras along on our road. Oh, how many cameras on each one? Each, there's four on each pole. God. And, um, and that, that's to, to purely to um, monitor the T3 lane. So they'll be, they'll be looking and seeing how many people are on each car, how long the car's been driving and... Um, in a stretch of, of Oniwa Road in the transit lane. But you're, you're right, the installation is unbelievable. I mean, the, the cameras were controversial enough, but, but I think everyone's on board with saying that the, the installation has been botched up. Um, many of them are in the middle of the path, <laughs> and on the southern side of the road, the path is actually a shared cycle and path, um, walking path. So, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable what they've done. What has Auckland Transport had to say about it? Are they defending... The, where they've where they've placed them? Uh, radio silence at the moment. Yeah. So a few of our uh, local board members have asked for an explanation, and we haven't received it yet. And to me, this is crazy. It's overkill because what are they? It, it's it's revenue gathering, really. Instead of instead of actually looking at how much traffic is going onto that road, and trying to work out how you make it flow, maybe even opening up the T three. Their answer is, no, we'll keep it crazily locked down and we'll just put all these cameras on it and this is what, to force us to take the bus? Yes, it is. Um, I mean, if you're going to have a transit lane, you do need to monitor it, but these cameras are overkill for for what's needed there. And we have been advised by Auckland Transport that there's already a 99% compliance on the transit lane, so it's absolutely overkill. Um, they, they do... Um, incentivise people to get onto the buses and that's fine. Auckland Transport has been doing a great job moving people onto buses but we are at a saturation point where there are a huge number of people in the community that just cannot um, use the buses. They, they might not be going directly to the city, they're going east, south, north to take a puna or they may be dropping their kids off at one of the several schools on mm. the road. Yep. They might need their cars before or after school. There's many reasons why people can't move to buses. So we're at that point now where um, further um, punishment is actually not going to do the trick. There needs to be a new way of looking at this road. Now, there's been a case of a recently of an elderly resident off the road who is already apprehensive about leaving home because she was ticketed for being in the transit lane after pulling out of her driveway. That's right, because you can only travel for about 50 metres in the transit lane before you have to get into the general lane. Right. And when, um, when there was um, someone there with holding a camera, 
um, you did have a good chance to be able to move into the general lane without without too much issue. Yes. But with all these cameras being now monitoring, you're less likely to be able to do that. So you, you're going to have to, if, you, if you're living on the road or you're coming out of a side street, you're going to have to pull out into the transit lane, stop and wait for it to be allowed into the general lane. Of course, that's going to hold up the buses on the transit lane as well. It's just a disaster. Gosh, is that right? So you won't even be able to coast for a couple of metres to try and get into the normal, normal transit lane. You're going to have to stop. Well, you're going to have to be careful not to trigger the, uh, the those cameras. cameras. Yeah. See, I live yeah, off yeah, Onewa Road. $150 fine. 150 <laughs> yeah. I live off Onewa Road and have done for 20-odd years, so I've seen these monstrosities go up, It's and I know how bad Onewa Road is. And I think what's frustrating is they continue, and we need housing, but there's all these big housing complexes uh, going up everywhere in your North Coats, Birkenhead, um, you know, and going further into Beach Haven. Yeah. Uh, and Birkdale, so we've got more and more people coming onto this main road, and but they will That's not right. look at how the flow of the road goes or widen or shut off another lane coming up and make it three lanes going down. They just put cameras up to get a $150 fine. How much money are they going to make? Unfortunately, quite a bit, and it's going to be coming out of the locals' pockets. Um, there's also a plan change on Onaway Road at the moment that's going through, and if that's successful, I think it allows for another 500 um, apartments in that one section, which, of course, is great for housing people, but it's going to be a real problem for um, Onaway Road. Yeah, so there's, so we've gone past the stage now, John. They're already up, so we can't we can't ban them. They're going to stay, aren't they? But what do you what do you want to see, especially these ones that are sitting in the middle of paths? Well, I actually went out there again last night to have a look at it, and uh, there was a contractor out, and he'd been asked by Open Transport to to make make them a bit safer, um, and so he was putting a cone either side, and that's really just not <laughs> that's really just not good enough. Um, and oh, I'm sorry. That's there's also <laughs> putting a cone also, around as well them. as well as being in the middle of the path. They also have this um, metal box sticking out of the side. If you have a look at some of the photos that are online, yeah. it's about my shoulder height, but it'll be head height for some people. And it's got sharp edges. Um, it's really dangerous. There's also bolts sticking up out of the ground where they've been put into the ground. Um, so no, today, today I'm actually calling on Auckland Transport to remove or relocate these poles before there's a serious accident. Mm, yep, good on you. Well, good luck, John. Um, we will watch... Especially, I will watch with um, great interest. Uh, John Gillen there is the uh, Kaipataki local board chairman. Guys, 0800 4747 Of course, if you're not on this road, you don't give a squat, obviously. And I get that. But all around uh, the country and in the, in the major cities, you over the years, you would have seen all sorts of cameras pop up in your T3s, your T2s, your speeding cameras. Uh, I, you know, I know they're revenue gathering. I mean, that is the absolute point of them. They're they're not there to help traffic flow, but I'd like to know wherever you are. Uh, you know, what is around your area that is just like what's happening on Onimba Road? What did you say? Seventeen poles, four cameras on each, sixty-eight cameras on the new T3 on this one road. It is overkill. My gosh. But wherever you are, what have you got popping up? Is it all the speed? Was we used to just have one speed camera on there, and we all knew where it was. So of course, you slowed down. They took that away. Then they put people there, actual physical people in the morning with cameras. I've been caught a few times. <laughs> what do you do? Um, you just you just say that you were turning into the super, uh, turning into get some gas. Oh eight hundred eight four four seven four seven. Wherever you are in the country, where are those those cameras? The speed cameras, the ones that catch you in the T. T lanes, T3 lanes, on your travels. What's your advice or tips to kind of get around them? John's just said, you know, you're going to have to pull out on Oniwa and actually stop the flow of traffic before you squeeze into the, the main transit lane. Love to know your tips and, and uh, tell us where you are in the country. Has your council gone crazy with cameras, whether it be speed whether it just be monitoring the T3s. Um, do you agree with them? Just get out of the T3 if you ain't got it, if you ain't got people in the car. There was a stage, because there's a high school down the middle of this road that I'm talking about, <laughs> there were kids at the top of the road in, in the peak of school time. Actually, this will this'll, this'll rile up the parents. 
uh, they were they would jump in a car where they saw they go hey do you want to take me down on Ever Road and um, me and my mates will jump in your car and and you drop us off at the school halfway down the road and that way we don't have to walk and you can go halfway down the T3 kids were getting into these cars with strangers and going down the road and then the person would stop the kids would pile out go a hundred meters into the school grounds, and the other person who was driving would just, you know, then go half halfway down and then pop into the normal transit lane. I think that was quite clever, but that was frowned upon apparently.